Welcome to the ninth episode in a legendary series about the life and reign of Edward Longshanks. In part nine, The Great Cause, we will talk about how Edward Longshanks involved himself in the succession crisis which gripped Scotland during the 1290s. During the 51st year of his life, King Edward I of England became a widower with the death of his wife Eleanor of Castile. Yet he ruled over a stable kingdom with sound finances, a peaceful aristocracy, and he had conquered Wales. In the year 1290, he sent 240 eggs covered in gold leaf to the Pope as an Easter gift popularizing the concept of Easter eggs. Late in his reign, Edward turned his attention to Scotland. King Alexander III of Scotland, like Edward Longshanks, enjoyed a long and successful reign. Unlike Edward, his children died before him, leaving Scotland without an heir. Alexander III died in 1286, accidentally slipping from a cliff when he hurried to meet his new bride as she sailed in from France. Six-year-old Margaret, the maid of Norway, was Alexander's final heir. She was the daughter of King Eric II of Norway and Margaret, a daughter of Alexander III. The guardians of Scotland, who ruled the kingdom in the absence of a king, negotiated a marriage between Margaret and Prince Edward of Carnarfon, the only surviving son and heir of King Edward of England, then five years old. They agreed that the children of Margaret and Prince Edward would rule both England and Scotland, though the realms would be allowed to keep their separate customs. Instead, a storm blew Margaret's ship off course and she became ill. Her ship landed on Orkney at St. Margaret's and on October 1290, the seven-year-old Margaret died. Her body was returned to Norway and laid to rest beside her mother in Christ's Kirk in Bergen. The Scots had lost their only heir to the throne. Thirteen rival claimants from Scotland's noble families came forward to vie for the crown. The task of choosing a new king came to be known as the Great Cause. Of them, John Balliol, John Hastings, and Robert de Bruce had the strongest claims as all three descended from King David I. The Guardians could not decide who would be king and civil war loomed. So, they turned to King Edward I to judge the claims. Edward demanded that all the claimants accept him as Lord Paramount of Scotland before he intervened. All reluctantly agreed as no one wished to be left out of the race. And Edward indicated that his supremacy would be symbolic. Scots and Scottish custom would still rule Scotland, so Edward said. In 1292, Edward chose John Balliol, perhaps because he was the weakest of the three and could be easily manipulated. On November 17th, at Berwick-upon-Tweed, John Balliol was named the new King of Scots and coronated at the Stone of Schoon. On December 26, King John swore homage to Edward of England. However, King Edward's puppet king wound up angering the Scottish nobles, who saw him as too submissive to the king who gave him the throne. Opposed to Balliol's deference to Edward, a council of war convened, officially to advise King John. Unofficially, they sought to stop the king from bending his knee to Longshanks with such enthusiasm. The twelve-member council comprising four bishops, Four earls and four barons sent a delegation to King Philip IV of France, for they needed an ally against King Edward. All the while, Edward Longshanks faced war with France. During the Great Cause, Edward Longshanks began negotiations with the French to marry his only surviving son, Edward of Carnarfon, to Blanche, the sister of King Philip IV. 
it seemed as if the wedding would happen until the day that a furious Edward learned that Blanche was already engaged to marry someone else. When the ruse came to light, Edward Longshanks declared war on France. When he decided to make Scottish knights fight in France, he incited Scotland to invoke their alliance with France and rise in rebellion. Edward Longshanks then called the Model Parliament in 1295. It included members from the clergy and the Knights of the Shire, along with large estate owners and two representatives from every shire and town or borough. Only those with wealth could join Parliament, but it still became wider than ever before as Edward sought the broadest possible base of support for his policies. In doing so, he copied a tactic used by Simon de Montfort, the rebel who challenged Plantagenet family rule nearly 30 years ago. By including wealthy but untitled subjects, Edward Longshanks created what would become the House of Commons. The model parliament approved Edward's proposed military campaign in Scotland. According to the chroniclers, they raised an army of 30,000 men. Ironically, the crisis with France, which triggered the Scots' rebellion to begin with, was diffused by Pope Boniface VIII. The Pope arranged for Edward I to marry Margaret of France, only 15 years old at the time. Meanwhile, Edward's son married Philip's daughter, Isabella of France. Yet the Scottish War would not end with a marriage, but begin with blood. The Scots tried to seize Carlisle Castle on March 26, 1296, an incursion that would be brutally avenged by Edward Longshanks. On March 28th, King Edward crossed the River Tweed with his titanic host. He neared Berwick, the largest city in Scotland and the second greatest port in Britain other than London. Some called it the Alexandria of the North. And then a chronicler wrote, When the town had been taken in this way and its citizens had submitted, King Edward spared no one, whatever the age or gender, and for two days streams of blood flowed from the bodies of the slain, for in his tyrannous rage he ordered 7,500 souls of both genders to be massacred, so that mills could be turned by the flow of their blood. In time, the border town would be repopulated with English settlers. To this day, the town remains part of England. Edward Longshanks intended the slaughter to terrify the Scots into submission, yet Scottish fighting spirit had not yet been extinguished. An English army under Earl John de Warren, a veteran of the Welsh campaigns, went ahead with a force of mounted men to engage the Scots. King John had not accompanied the Scottish army to Dunbar and instead placed John Common the Red in charge. However, the presence of many other Scottish magnates created a muddled chain of command. The Scots arrived at Dunbar on April 27th and assembled on Spottismuir, a ridge of high ground. Undeterred, Surrey crossed a creek called the Spot Burn to attack the Scots. Red Common decided to charge and only reached the English as they formed up on the far side of Spot Burn. On that day, the Scots lost a hundred nobles to English captivity. With stunning speed, the castles in southern Scotland surrendered to Edward I. Hoping to at least keep his crown, King John surrendered to Longshanks, and instead of restoring him, King Edward stripped King John of his royal regalia like a disobedient vassal and forced him to abdicate before locking him in the Tower of London. In a show of raw power, he seized the Stone of Schoon, where Scottish kings had been crowned for generations, and took it to England, where he made it part of his throne. It looked as if Edward Longshanks conquered Scotland as he conquered Wales. We will find out if he succeeded in the next episode.
Thank you for joining me in this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.